models. Uh, Safe tensors is a better and secure format. Um, it's a work in progress to convert hugging faces, converting uh, the the old format to this format. It's not vulnerable to uh, embedding malicious code, but it is vulnerable to um, poisoning the data, as I showed in a second demo. Overlay is an open source uh, browser extension to help developers uh, be more uh, aware to problems in packages before they install them. Uh, it's open source. Uh, this is how it works. You browse Stack Overflow. Uh, you have someone anonymous recommending a package. We expect developers to make some work and to check whatever they about to install because they have a lot of responsibility. So it gives you shortcuts to websites like Socket, uh, which have very good analysis of what you're about to install. Um, in a general, reduce the excessive trust you give in open source. You do your own vetting. And last slide, um, if you like this content, make sure to check our blog post. This is where it's posted. Uh, hopefully, the hostages is going to return safe and soon. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Joseph. And Alon, will you, I Amit, will you uh, sharing your screen? Mm -hmm. uh, let me first remind everyone that if you have any uh, questions to make, feel free to write them in the Q&A section. And again, you can also reach out to Joseph later on, uh, here or after the meetup uh, itself. And a few words about Amit. So Amit, coming from Pentera, uh, he's a security researcher at Pantera, is focusing on Windows Active Directory and web-based attacks. Amit comes from a defender background, leveraging this experience to address vulnerability effectively. And again, stay tuned. He's going to show a few demos as well of some of the cool stuff that he is building. Amit? Awesome. Awesome. Just give me a confirmation that you can see my screen. Yes, you can. Awesome. So, hi. Um, this is going to be a very technical presentation. And I'm going to show some uh, live demos because clicking links is always fun. Uh, since I attack WebLogic, it sometimes attacks me back and my machine may be slow, or may crash. I have backups of everything, so don't get excited if it happens. Also, I'm a little bit sick, so if I cough sometimes, just ignore it. I'll try to mute in time, but I can't promise anything. Uh, we will count the number of degrees that uh, drop due to your cups. <laughs> no, just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> Awesome. So let's start. So the agenda is uh, we're talking about a little bit about motivation when attacking web applications, web logic, two CVEs, a lot of post exploitation. This is the main thing, but we're going to build our way to it. This is why it's the road to post exploitation. And then mitigations, which is always fun. So uh, my name is Amit German. I'm 25 years old, living in Israel, and I'm working uh, at Pentera as an offensive security researcher for about a, a year and a half now. I'm originally a blue teamer, so I'll try to bring this perspective uh, when I'm talking about attacking and how to protect, and especially in the mitigations part. Uh, but you can always just ask me questions uh, later, how would how you would defend against this thing. Um, so I am going to talk about web logic and specifically two old vulnerabilities from 2020. Um, so it's really important for me to say that uh, these vulnerabilities are still being exploited today. This is an article from the past few months, uh, specifically about these two vulnerabilities um, on WebLogic, of course. And uh, yeah, so everything here is relevant. Uh, so you should listen. <laughs> awesome. So an over, over, over simplification of how you would approach attacking uh, a web application. Again, over, over simplifications, just to make the point uh, clear. So we have the front end, which is what we, the clients, are accessible to. Uh, then we have the back end, which is uh, the mastermind of the entire server. Uh, it controls everything, controls the front end, controls uh, and controls uh, every connection it needs or every application it needs in order to run properly. For example, database connections, API communications, file uh, storage systems, anything really. So what's interesting for us of course, the, the database and all the file storage is more interesting, but if you reach to the backend, uh, you basically win because you can access everything it uh, has access to, of course. Um, you can wipe it, you can get sensitive information, you can change the, the front end to display anything you want, psychological warfare, uh, anything really. Um, 
So this is what we're going to focus on. Um, awesome. So um, what is WebLogic? Uh, it's an enterprise level application uh, developed by Oracle. Um, and the keyword here is enterprise uh, application because it means that if you are running this program, uh, this software, um, you're probably a high scale uh, company that uh, has something to lose. Um, so uh, you're probably also running a lot of applications on it and attacking it means uh, a complete victory over you. Uh, it's based on uh, Java Enterprise Edition, um, Java EE, and it operates as a middleware, which I'm going to show uh, just a bit how it looks, uh, which is basically just a bridge between backend and frontend. It's meant to be completely transparent to the average user. Um, it's mostly useful for develop developers. It's capable of hosting multiple applications. It's highly scalable and uh, supports database connections and, and much more. This is just uh, a short summary of what is WebLogic. And from my experience, you're welcome to correct me if I'm wrong. It's a nightmare to update uh, because when I try to uh, install an updated instance of my WebLogic just to test my payloads that I'm not uh, you know, making any false positives, um, I they requested me to uh, input support identifier, which is probably, uh, you saved it somewhere in a text file in the Confluence page and you lost it. And then you need to wait for the customer uh, support to contact you, then get the patch, then downtime, and then install. And no one likes downtime, uh, which might uh, make the um, web logic vulnerabilities especially interesting because you don't want downtime in such a core uh, software in your organization. Uh, and yeah, so. Back to the oversimplification, uh, we're aiming for the backend. Uh, so WebLogic looks something like this. Again, general overview. Um, we have the client here, which is basically anything that can initiate uh, connections, mobile devices, Java clients, Python, anything that can just send packets. Uh, then we have the middle tier, which is the WebLogic server, and the backend tier, which is uh, everything the WebLogic uh, can use in order to run properly or to gain more features, databases, Java applications, which is basically its main feature, uh, anything really. So if you uh, get to the WebLogic server, you basically win uh, because you have access to everything it runs, every single application. Um, and then you don't need to attack the application itself because you gain access to everything. Okay, so time to take a look. Um, about how it looks. So please load WebLogic. <laughs> okay, here it goes. As I said, this software hates me. Um, so we are presented uh, with a login view, uh, a login interface, which is basically, uh, from this we can only infer there is no MFA. So if you gain credentials, we can just log in. And the important detail is right here below, which is the version of the server, which is going to be useful for us uh, in, a, in a sec. Um, Okie doke. Let's continue. So what now? Now we need to set goals uh, for what we're going to do. Um, so our goals are gain remote code execution on the WebLogic server, collect useful data. We still don't know what's useful data. We just collect everything we find interesting. And finally, the train top is deploy backdoor. Uh, requirements for the RCE, we're going to need uh, the authentication bypass. Uh, and for the two others, we're going to need to complete the first goal, which is RCE. Um, and we're going to talk about two cute vulnerabilities. The first one, I'm bad with numbers, so I'll just call it authentication bypass. And the second one is uh, remote code execution. So 883 authentication bypass, 82 uh, RCE. Um, why old vulnerabilities, by the way, is there are so many vulnerabilities to WebLogic server. Most of them kind of look uh, and act the same, so it doesn't really matter. And these two are especially interesting and still viable today. So it's going to be fun. Let's talk about the first one, uh, the authentication bypass vulnerability. Very, very easy to execute. It's just uh, a path traversal vulnerability. All you need to do is paste uh, this. Uh, in your URL. And it's basically what it's going to do is, you know, go into a publicly accessible folder, CSS images, go one directory back, and then go uh, into the portal applications, which is uh, the administration console. So let's open it. Okay. 
So uh, it looks something like this, and you can already see that it looks kind of funky. Uh, URL uh, images are not uh, loading icons, and you can see that it says uh, just welcome, comma, no username. So you know something is wrong, and you can fiddle around and get stuff. Uh, but if you're going to enter most of the links, you're going to get an error uh, message, and you're not going to find any information. So we did manage to bypass authentication, uh, but uh, it's just a step in the road. It's not the final destination. So let's continue. By the way, just a fun fact, uh, WebLogic, when they patched it, uh, they just uh, put this uh, URL in a deny list. Uh, and then the researchers were like, oh, OK, uh, capital E's. And they just bypassed the restriction. Um, so patching is important. It's all not always the first thing you want to do. Dangerous sentence to say, but I said it. So uh, RCE. Um, which is this vulnerability, it exploits a weakness in the HTTP request handling, and uh, it requires authentication. So uh, it's really important, this keyword. Um, but since we already have the previous one, the authentication bypass, if we chain them together, uh, we basically get unauthenticated RCE. Uh, fun fact, in case you noticed, um, the CVE numbers are, are kind of weird. Uh, it's because the original researcher um, found the RCE first, realized it's authenticated, and then it was like, but I want it unauthenticated, it's cooler. So we found the, uh, the authentication bypass uh, vulnerability. Okay. So there are two methods that we're going to talk about um, for uh, this CVE. One is the shell method, kind of straightforward, um, most likely to succeed if you're vulnerable. And the second one is the remote XML method, uh, which is, uh, it has its benefits. We're going to talk about it in a stack, um, but it's less likely to succeed. We'll also talk about it. Awesome. So uh, the shell method, easy to execute because you just need to copy paste something. You don't really have to understand it. Just put your parallel and victory. Um, basically just using uh, the two methods, just using a vulnerability uh, in um, a specific library used by uh, WebLogic. <clears throat> and it only works, this one, this method, only works for newer versions of WebLogic. So uh, this version uh, and, new, and newer, and it's not working on old instances. And, and when you want to attack something, you want it to work like 100% of the time if, it's, uh, if, if the instance is vulnerable. Um, we're going to talk about it in a sec. Also, uh, it looks something like this. Don't worry, don't bother reading it. We're going to break it down together in just a sec. But just an example um, of how it looks. Uh, you can see uh, we changed here in the URL uh, the authentication bypass method. And there is a huge payload uh, pasted here in the URL, which is basically just doing cat etc pass wd. Now, um, even if you don't run with root privileges, it doesn't really matter because we don't care about the OS. We care about the web logic itself uh, when we're talking here. Um, so we just have access to everything uh, under the web logic server. Um, so, you know, uh, ETC possibility is nice. Uh, if we don't work with root privileges, it's fine. Uh, let's break it down. Let me zoom in a bit. Oh, okay. yeah. So uh, in the first part, we give a handle to the vulnerable uh, library. Uh, and then we're get getting the current thread uh, that's running and the current unit of, of work. Uh, then we uh, use reflection because we're not accessible uh, to it normally uh, to the connection handler, um, which is we are going to use in order to get the HTTP uh, servlet request, which is what's being used to communicate back with the client. Um, so this way, you can send the information back to us. Otherwise, we can exploit it, but we won't know the answer, which is also fine. But you know, we want the answer if you want to exploit data. Data, uh, and here's some um, some OS magic. You know, if it's Windows, uh, do cmd.exe. If it's Linux, bash, and and get the command from the header. So you can see the header right here, which is just echo pentera. You can see also the output to the right, and then just interrupt the thread so the program can continue running. And uh, yeah, pretty easy. You don't really need to understand it. All you need to do if you're going to use it is just change the header to whatever you want. 
There are limitations. I won't talk about it. You can read it uh, in the article if uh, it's interesting to you. Slurp. All right, cool. Um, and the other method, which is a bit less straightforward, um, but it works on every web log unpatched, every unpatched web logic uh, version. It has a lot of limitations, character limits, special characters, et cetera, et cetera. Again, you can just read about it in the article if you find it interesting. Uh, so the process looks something like this. Uh, we have the attacker, which is us, and the web logic console. Uh, so we send a malicious URL, uh, which then the web logic server is going to access the malicious server uh, and request this XML. Uh, it receives and runs the XML, and then it needs to initiate a connection back uh, in order to send the results, because this time it, it's running um, asynchronously, uh, so we, we can just receive the answer. And um, this part right here, if you limit outbound connections from your server, which is what's recommended to do, you can basically just avoid completely this attack, because uh, the WebLogic server is not supposed to initiate connections to clients, Clients are supposed to initiate connection to it. It can uh, initiate connection to you know to databases and everything it needs in order to run properly. But you can monitor this and block this, and then uh, this entire part wouldn't be possible. Um, okay, so um, in order to uh, execute this, we need uh, to craft a malicious XML. This one just runs uh, a bash cut etc plus wd command. It can be really anything. Uh, um, but notice that there is nothing that initiates the connection back. So it's going to be executed, but it's not going to send back the information. Um, we're going to show uh, later in this presentation an XML that actually works. And then you need to execute it on the WebLogic server. So you can see that we're chaining again uh, the authentication bypass command. Uh, and then this time we're using file system XML application context, which is the vulnerable library. Uh, and then we're just giving um, a URL to the malicious machine that contains the malicious XML. That's it, easy. Um, so we achieved unauthenticated RCE. We're not going to continue with privilege escalation because we're focused on the web logic application itself. Um, so time to move on to the next goal, which is uh, find interesting, useful data and upload a web shell. Um, so WebLogic has a management API, the WLS RESTful Management Interface. And this is a, a quote that I took from uh, Oracle's documentation. So let me read it for you. WebLogic RESTful Management Services provide a comprehensive public interface for configuring, monitoring, deploying, and administering, administrating web, uh, WebLogic server in all supported environments, um, which sounds kind of like everything we need um, when we want to attack WebLogic. Um, so this documentation is very, very good. It contains basically every example, everything you need in order to use it maliciously and not maliciously. I know, which is always a thin line um, when you document stuff. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're going to use it. So let's take a look at the management API. Mm -mm -mm. If it's going to load. Yeah, and well, we need to input credentials. And unfortunately for us this time, uh, there is no known vulnerability uh, for um, bypassing this authentication. So we need to actually take a step back and replan our way because we now need to gain the WebLogic Console user credentials. So new goal, extract the credentials and then proceed with the, uh, with the current goals. So um, tell me your password, WebLogic, and apparently, it's telling us because WebLogic saves its encrypted passwords in the following scenarios. If it's running in development mode, which is we are probably not going to uh, to see in the wild, um, it's going to contain the uh, plain text user in a file called config.xml and an encrypted password in the same file. Uh, so we have uh, we already have a user, and then we just need to decrypt the password. Um, we're not going to face this probably, so let's uh, move to the next thing. Um, WebLogic has a quick startup um, thingy, which is basically just a file that contains uh, then both encrypted uh, username and password. 
uh, which basically means that if the server crashes, restarts, whatever, you, you won't need to manually input the credentials. No one wants downtime, so I would expect that it would be present in most production WebLogic instances. Um, so this is uh, the file that I mainly aimed for uh, when I did my research. And it's uh, WebLogic always saves its encryption file in a file called serializedsystemini.dat, which is just a binary, binary file uh, that we're going to need to parse. Um, right, a sec. Okay, so uh, getting the files. We already have RC. I'm going to skip this part um, because we already showed it many times. Um, but yeah, so uh, we can just extract all of the files that we need uh, in order to decrypt the password, uh, which is first the config.xml file, um, just a simple command run it and you're going to get this blob of data. It's contained in a very large file, uh, but uh, this is only the interesting section. So I took it. Um, so you can see that already, you can see that the WebLogic uh, console user username is WebLogic and the password is encrypted in AES. Okay, fine, no problem. In case it's not present, uh, let's get boot.properties. Um, so do the, uh, it's, it's, it's just in a different folder. Uh, and you're going to see the password and the username both encrypted. So we're going to need to encrypt both of them this time. And finally, extracting serialized system mini, uh, just um, a, a blob of command that just gives us a uh, base uh, 64 data uh, that we're going to um, unparse, to parse and use. Uh, and then smashing them all together into one payload and execute it using the shell method, uh, it looks something like this. So you can see that um, the header this time contains everything that we need to run it, some delimiters just for, uh, uh, to make the parsing easier in the future. Uh, it runs everything into temporary file, then just prints the temporary files and removes any um, footsteps that we left behind. And again, using the shell session, and you can see that this is a part of the output on the right. Uh, it's going to be a very, very large output, and then you just need to parse it uh, very, very easy because we put the delimiters and we know what we're expecting. And the XML file, we're going to give Windows some love too, because you can't just attack Linux. Um, let's break it down together. So you can see that everything is divided into bins. Uh, bin pb1, bin pb0, everything runs at the same time. So it means that the order really doesn't matter. Uh, and you're going to see in a sec what we're going to do about it. So Exactly the same thing. Um, we're using, we're just printing config into a temporary file and putting a delimiter. Um, we this time we're using certitude, which is just a lull bin, so uh, we know it's supposed to be always present. And we are uh, writing um, serial system mini. Um, we're encoding it so it's base sixty four. Uh, boot properties exactly the same thing. And this is the interesting part. We're going to use pings as a flip uh, method, because if we run everything together, the files are still being written, and then you can't just send it because they're not present yet. You're going to face errors. Um, so we're using ping um, with a timeout of a second. So wait just 50 second, 15 seconds, and then just send back the information to us using curl to our uh, malicious attack machine. And after 20 seconds, um, just delete the, all the, the footprints we left behind. Awesome. So this is the XML file, and it's time to decrypt the password. We already have everything that we need, and now all we need to do is just decrypt it. Um, thankfully to us, uh, IP forums are a thing, and uh, just uh, one thing that uh, hints to all the attackers out there, if you ever need something that can be also related to an IT issue, just search the IT forums, because guys are really helpful to other IT guys there and you're most likely going to find answers. So I just typed, you know, please help. I'm a WebLogic uh, administrator and I lost my password. And there are a lot of forums that are uh, trying to help each other. And there was one guy that was like, hey, uh, I uh, if you have all the files that you need in order to decrypt the password, um, I wrote a script, a Python script that you can just run offline and, uh, you know, and decrypt it. Um, so, all you need to do is give it uh, the passphrase. And you can see that I also give it the serialized system in it dot that, which is going to do some Python magic extract the key. 
And yeah, it's going to decrypt it for us. So uh, the user is WebLogic and the password is WebLogic1. <clears throat> and now we have everything uh, we need in order to access the management API. So let's access it. So WebLogic, WebLogic1. And yeah, this is the management API. It's saying not found because we didn't With your head of security that allowed you to do something as simple as that, WebLogic1. What's, what's the possible? <laughs> it's supposed to be attacked. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, uh, but yeah, I'll, by the way, it's just the default settings. So I didn't change it. So yeah, change your default settings. Um, so this is the management API. We can start, you know, fuzzing uh, in it and just accessing all the different URLs. We're going to uh, to see a, a lot of data that we can just explore. Everything is thoroughly documented in Oracle's uh, website. So I don't need to invent anything and we're not really going to fuzz it. I'm just going to show you everything that I found uh, when I first researched. So yeah, yeah it just uh, an API for management. Fun. Let's go. Um, so finding databases, databases are saved in this path, management, web logic, blah, 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 JDBC system resources. And we can just uh, enter this URL. You can see it here above that I'm not lying to you. And uh, we can see that there is uh, one JDBC data source being defined here. And we also uh, we can also see that there is a source path uh, towards an XML that probably contains configurations. Uh, we have RC. Let's use it. Let's get it. So let's press the cyber. And again, I skipped this part, but again, you can see that I changed uh, the two vulnerabilities together here. Uh, and you basically get almost, not almost, you get everything, but the password is encrypted that you need in order to connect to this database. So you have the database. Um, what uh, system is it? You have uh, your IP, you have your port, you have the table name, the DB, the DB name, the driver. You have the username, which is root, and the encrypted password. But encrypted passwords are no problem for us right now because we already have everything we need in order to decrypt it. Uh, so yeah, just use the same script like before. And we have the uh, the password. And now we can connect to the database. Easy peasy. And finding deployed applications, because we want to know everything that runs on it. Um, so just a little disclaimer. Uh, WebLogic is not running using sandboxes. So it means that if you manage to attack uh, an application, you have access to the entire OS. Um, so you you need to secure not only your web application console and the server, you also need to make sure that every application you upload it to it is secured because otherwise you're going to have real issues. Um, so uh, this is the past uh, deployment manager, app deployments, and you can just enter it. And we can see that there is one application defined. It's called Benefits. It's just an example application that I downloaded from their uh, uh, from their uh, documentation. And we can just access it. It's on a different port. So notice that the uh, administration console is on this port. And we're going to use another port in order to access the application itself. So it's just a really simple application. Nothing much to it. The JavaScript. Yeah. And we're going to completely bamboozle it. So our plan is to download this application, modify it, uh, put a malicious web shell in it, upload it again, redeploy it, and uh, great success. So step one, we need to get the path for the deployed applications. So uh, again, management API has everything that we need. So let's just access it. And uh, we can see if we scroll a little bit down, we can see that there is an absolute source path that contains a WAR file uh, that we're going to download and then we can modify it. So um, a WAR file is a web application resource, web application archive, everybody calls it something different, couldn't find <laughs> a, a specific name for it, but yeah, it's just a zip file. Um, and we can easily unzip it, see a lot of JSP files, and this is basically just the application. So now all that we need to do is put a web shell. Now, I'm really, really bad at JavaScript, but you know who is not bad at JavaScript? ChatGPT. Uh, so I just asked them to write um, a cute little web shell that we can just upload it. 
he was like, no, I can't do it. It's not secure. And I was like, it's for research purposes. And then he gave me what I needed, um, uh, which is basically, you know, if you can understand it, kudos to you. But I guess it's not that hard. <laughs> um, it's just a, a web shell that can accept commands. You execute it, you get a result back. Um, all right, so let's do it. So we have the uh, Dwar file, which we then put the web shell uh, the JetGPT gave us in this file. We use this Java command in order to rezip it into a word file. And we have a new file that we can now just upload and uh, redeploy the application using the malicious uh, JSP file that we put into it. Um, again, uh, I just copied an example of how you would use it from the documentation and just change everything that I need. So you can see that we need the credentials so I put the credentials, the very, very secure credentials uh, right here. And we already know everything that we need. For example, we know that the, the server that the application is deployed into is called the admin server because we can see it in the in the management API. Uh, and we give the source path on my computer. Um, just take this WAR file and redeploy it, which is, you can see this string right here, management, web logic, blah, 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 deployments, benefits, redeploy. It's going to cause a little bit of a downtime, um, but it's not supposed to be uh, more than a second, uh, you know, a few seconds if your web logic hates you like it hates me. Um, and then you can just redeploy it. And I, I guess no one would notice. It's really up to you and your monitoring. And then we can just access it. Um, so let's see it. We have the application It looks uh, exactly the same like before, but this time we can just enter webshell.jsp and it's not going to work because it hates me. <laughs> Give it a second. Um, but yeah, we're just going to see an input box uh, that we can just use and uh, put every command that we want. Uh, it really depends if we have privileges, um, but if we don't, we already have anything that uh, um, we have access to every weblogic server file. So again, ATTC plus WD, fun, LS, fun. And uh, yeah, um, and this is a complete victory because even if you patch your web, your web logic server right now, um, this web shell is still going to stay if you didn't notice it. And since the, the, there is no sandbox, it means that you still have complete control of the web logic and you can just you know put the web shell on every application deployed. Um, so it's really important to notice that you know patching is good, um, but it's not the only solution that you need to implement when you want to defend yourself, because things like this can completely mess you up when you think you're safe. Um, and yeah, uh, that, that's about it. So uh, let's move to uh, summary and then mitigations. Uh, so we achieved unauthenticated remote code execution using two vulnerabilities, one for authentication bypass, uh, one for ICE, we chained it together. And we also uh, saw uh, the shell method and the remote XML method, one easier, one harder, uh, but both works. And we then decrypted the user credentials and then we use the management API to do everything that we want, gather information, we can do much more. Um, and then we uploaded a malicious web shell to a legit applications. So uh, let's talk about mitigations. Um, so I put the patch uh, uh, the last point, because I really, really think that, you know, patching is important, but it's really hard. So let's talk about all the, the other viable solutions. Um, so limit your access to the admin port. No one except for your uh, administrators need to access the administration port. And it is accessible uh, in a lot of instances. You can search it in Shodan. I hope that after the recent attack, it's, they're no longer exposed. Uh, but yeah, no one needs to access it, especially because your applications are, are running on a different port. Um, monitor access to sensitive files. Only the WebLogic user itself is supposed to access them in a very specific manner. So, you know, if you see someone doing cat uh, config.xml, uh, it's probably wrong and uh, it should alert you. So monitor uh, access to your sensitive files. Make sure no one is accessing it except for logic. Do a do a little, you know, uh, a baseline of what's supposed to happen. Sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not. Monitor any commands running from the service user. Again, it's supposed to run uh, with a very specific uh, 
you know, just a very specific command that it's supposed to run. It's not supposed to uh, to do cat etc plus wd. And web application firewall, super important because if you use web application firewall, we would uh, completely limit the XML attack. And we can also use you know, web application firewall to limit the access to the admin port, uh, but it, it's, it's a really important solution. And I have no idea if Oracle has a buffet. I hope that WebLogic has a buffet, uh, but uh, yeah, you should always enable it if it's a thing. If you if there is no MFA on the WebLogic server, I know there are services that can be a middleware uh, between your service and provide MFA services. And uh, then even if we got the WebLogic credentials, we wouldn't be able to use it because we're limited. And again, patch, if you can do it, it's important, uh, but make sure that you're not in a... Um, mind that patching equals safe. And uh, yeah, that's about it. That was amazing, Amit. Thank you very, very much. And guys, if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the Q&A section. Uh, I know that it's a pretty technical and heavy stuff, uh, but uh, since we know some of you from previous